Amidst all the reports of declassified documents and intel about recovered alien technology, I thought I should share my own story. You see, I recently got my hands on what I'm pretty sure is alien tech from sometime in the late 60s or early 70s. This is the Panasonic RE8250 CFET FMAM multiplex stereo with dual 8-track tape decks. Yes, I did that in one take. No, it is not of this earth. Yes, it is awesome. This unit showed up at the Angel View thrift store in Palm Desert a while back and somehow ended up here in my living room under mysterious circumstances that in no way involved spending another 20 bucks. It's been a while since I've done history on this channel, so today we're going to go right on with that trend and jump directly into demoing this thing because there is a lot to show you. This is functionally a complete stereo system. All you need is a pair of speakers, perhaps a pair of bookshelf speakers, or even some Bang & Olufsen Beovox S75s, whatever you have lying around which is totally not just a tease for a later video. It features AM radio, FM multiplexed radio, which we'll get into in a minute, two eight track decks, and all the features of an early 70s stereo amplifier, including a phono input. Okay, yes, it has a phono input, but that's kind of a lie. I'll explain why in a minute because there's something a bit odd with that, but first let's take a look at the front. Let's start on the left. The two tape decks are stacked vertically. The doors have unusually heavy springs keeping them closed. Like most 8-track players, it automatically plays when you insert a cartridge. The first circle is a tape display. The outer lights indicate the program number, which you can cycle with this button on the right. The inner halves indicate which cartridge is playing, and that button is on the left. Isn't that green glow great? Below that, you can select the playback behavior, single, double, and repeat. I know it seems silly to have to explain this, but if you think about the fact that 8-track tapes are continuous loops of tape, that means they don't have a definite stopping point. It would just keep playing continuously if something didn't tell the machine to stop. The tapes themselves have a little piece of metal foil that acts as both a splice for the tape loop and a trigger for the program to change. Machines can either stop at the end of program 4 or jump back to program 1 depending on how it was designed. In this case, we can tell it to stop at program 4, go to the next cartridge and stop at 4, or just keep going and cycling the two tapes forever. Or until the tapes break. Which is often. The radio functions on this unit are probably my favorite thing about it. The other two circles are the radio dials, and the way they display the numbers is really cool. Both radio dials light up with that same alien green light. As you tune the radio, the dials spin and light up with the glowing indicator that also shows whether you're on AM or FM, and the FM has a multiplexed stereo option. Let's go ahead and talk about multiplexing. I'm not going to sit here and act like an expert. There are plenty of great videos out there on YouTube that explain it really well. For our purposes, multiplexing is basically more than one signal on the same frequency. In this case, it's the left and right stereo channel. They're able to do that by using carrier waves like the Whale Probe in Star Trek IV. The FM frequency is many times higher than the highest frequency of the audio signal. By doing that, they can send not only the audio itself, but the difference between the two channels, which the receiver then decodes. Again, to properly explain this would take a really long video in and of itself, and there are much better people out there to do that than me. Below the tuning knob, you have the AFC switch. AFC stands for American Football Conf. AFC stands for Automatic Frequency Control. That's there to keep your radio tuned to a specific frequency. A perfect circuit would stay perfectly tuned. But real circuits get hot, they move, they change over time, and you lose reception. This creates an error voltage which compensates for the shift. It's kind of what I imagine they're doing on Voyager when they yell things like, COMPENSATE FOR SHIELD VARIANTS! Finishing off the front are the bass and treble knobs. We know what those do. Your selector knob, which selects the AM, FM, FM stereo, tape PH, which is your input, and 8-track. Then you have your balance knob and your power volume knob. Lastly, a quarter inch headphone jack. Everything has a headphone jack. The styling on the front is what makes this unit attractive, but what made this machine interesting to me is on the back. On the left, you have your speaker outputs using RCA connectors. Next to that is a line level record output. That would hook up to a cassette, reel to reel player, or a separate amplifier. You have antenna inputs for a large aerial up here, and below that are auxiliary inputs. A line level input for tape, CD, aux cord, or whatever, and the phono input for your turntable. Then there's a weird little switch. What's that for? Occasionally the lights on the program indicator get all screwy. It doesn't cycle through the programs or display which cartridge is playing. Sometimes the light will go dim or two light up at once. While I don't know why it does that, the fix is really simple. It's just that switch in the back. You just press that. It is literally a fix button. I think you have to do it with the machine running, but it actually works. We had to do it when we first bought it. Again, that's alien tech, I'm telling you. This machine has a strange behavior. 
It's one of those, it's not a bug, it's a feature situations. Despite the phono labeling, it doesn't actually have a preamp. You need a preamp for a turntable. Both the inputs on the back are actually line level. And here's the weird thing. If you're on the tape and pH setting, you can actually hear both inputs at the same time. I don't know how I feel about that yet. But there's a part of me that, if you've seen my previous videos, you know wants to rig random fart noises up to play while you're listening to something. Because deep down, I'm still seven years old. When we got this thing, it wasn't working. The belts had turned into the black oil from the X-Files. That's usually the story, isn't it? Fortunately, this being an A-Track player, it's also really easy to fix that. So let's open this thing up and I'll show you the inside quickly. To get inside, you want to remove seven screws. These three, these two, and these two. But there's a hidden one inside here, so it's actually eight. Then the whole top lifts off. Look at all that alien technology. Humans didn't make this thing, whatever it is. It's way too complicated. You can see the two stacked tape players. The top belt is really easy to change. There's even a space in the wood on top to fit it. The bottom belt requires some kind of little hook or hemostat to grab. Just unscrew the four bottom screws and the two that attach it to the faceplate, and you can reach inside. Easy access. Once the new belts are on, just close it up and make sure you get the fiberboard panel to sit back in this little groove when you put it back. I know most of you are audio guys and you already know this, but to anyone else, most of the time when these old tape machines don't run, it's just the belt or the parts are sticky from old grease. There's nothing actually wrong with it. I am not a repair guy, and I started off this YouTube channel knowing nothing about old stereos, but I can usually get these things to work when I find them. And I hope that what you take away from this is that if I can, you definitely can. It's more than worth the try, because the fun factor of having unusual pieces like this in your stereo is way worth the effort. Okay, now before I go, I want to address the long pause between this video and the last one. I lost my hat. Okay, well that, and I got married, like properly. We were busy with the logistics of that and the honeymoon. She walked down the aisle to Star Trek music though, and my cousin Kelly was my best man. My aunt Jackie got a lap dance and there were chickens running around everywhere. It was a lot of fun, but it was a lot of work. However, I'm back and I'm back to putting out videos. Hopefully the next one will be out at the normal Friday 11 a.m. time like I usually do. So with that, I miss my hat and Again.